Hello again, everyone. This is Bill Owen with another broad podcast, and this one is about mnemonics. Oh, we're straying far afield from the usual uh, trivia and baseball, football, basketball, Hollywood stars, old-time radio, early television. Uh, we've, we've had some uh, far afield ones earlier, world philosophers we've done, and uh, noted left-handers, sportscasters. Mnemonics, it comes from a Greek word, uh, nemon, G-N-E-M-O-N, which meant mindful. And, of course, it uh, simply refers to any system for improving or assisting our memory. And uh, every everyone has their own favorites, I think. There are some basic ones. I guess one of the most basic is uh, one that's used a lot, and I certainly use it in my mind. 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except February's 28. The leap year comes once in four, gives February one day more. Oh, yes, we all know. First, you don't really need the latter part because everybody knows about February, but it does come in handy to say 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. Keeps it simple. How about another common one? Spring forward, fall back. We don't have to uh, trouble our mind about uh, whether to set the clocks forward or back when daylight saving time arrives. Oh, Kel Keach, beloved announcer, ABC. He was the announcer on the old Popeye radio program for young kids. And after he retired as announcer at NBC, he came over to ABC and and was uh, assistant supervisor of the announcers. And I I remember when Daylight Saving Time came along, he said, I hope none of our announcers say savings time. It's it's singular, Daylight Saving Time. Of course, it's commonly said as savings time, but that's the correct usage. Cal was right. Favorites, how to remember British peerage rank. Do men ever visit Boston? It stands for Duke, Marquis, Earl, Viscount, and Baron. Do men ever visit Boston? Another common one is Holmes for remembering the Great Lakes, the five Great Lakes. Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. But there's a there's a far better one than Holmes. Some men hate eating onions. That gives them from left to right on the map or west to east. I like that. And also, from smallest to largest, superheroes must eat oats. S-H-M-E-O. Roy G. Biv, you know that one? The colors of the rainbow in order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Another of my favorites, kind of esoteric, but uh, from uh, the world of biology, King Philip, come out for goodness sake. What can that be? That stands for the uh, taxonomic classifications from largest to smallest. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. King Philip, come out for goodness sake. Another of my favorites, Ogden Nash had a little couplet. The camel has a single hump, the dromedary too, or else the other way around. I'm never sure, are you? So it turns out the answer to that is the other way around. The dromedary has a single hump and uh, the camel has two, Bactrian camels. Here's a practical one, righty tidy, lefty loosey, you know that one? For right-handed thread screws and nuts and light bulbs, of course. Righty, tidy, lefty, loosey, which way to turn it. Most of us don't really need that one, but it's kind of fun to remember. If you took piano lessons as a young person or at any time in your life, you might remember every good boy does fine for the treble clef lines, the notes, and then for uh, for the spaces, it was face, F-A-C-E. I, I found it very helpful as a youngster. The planets, 
My very educated mother just served us noodles. Those for the, the eight planets. Well, it, that's changed over the years. It used to be my very educated mother. Sometimes it was my very earnest mother. It doesn't matter. Just served us nine pizzas. The reason being Pluto was at that time considered a, uh, a planet, but it's been downgraded, as you know, to what they call a dwarf planet. It came back around the year 2006 when they decided that Pluto no longer qualified as a regular planet. And here's a very specialized mnemonic. On old Olympus's towering tops, a Finn and German viewed some hops. Unless you have been a medical student in some university, uh, you probably wonder what in the world that refers to. It's a way of memorizing the 12 cranial nerves, which med students were normally required to memorize. On old Olympus's towering tops, a Finn and German viewed some hops. So the, uh, the letters in order are olfactory, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducens, facial, auditory, glossopharyngeal, vagus, sensory, and finally hypoglossal. On old Olympus, towering tops, a thin and German viewed some hops. British peerage, ever use that one? I think we, uh, we've talked about that earlier, British peerage, do men ever visit Boston? Duke, Marquis, Earl, Viscount, and Baron. Uh, it bears repetition, I think. My mother using one for stalactites and stalagmites, remember, which are uh, on the ceiling and which are on the floor of a cave. And there is a mnemonic for that. Stalactites cling tight to the ceiling. Stalagmites might reach the ceiling. You get it? Stalactites cling tight to the ceiling. Stalagmites might reach the ceiling. Stalagmites and stalactites. But that one I definitely use. I need that one. View with a nautical interest. You may have heard red right return. That's for the Boyd system. When you are returning, you want to keep that red light to the starboard side. So it's red right return. And uh, as a young aviation student, I had one I used to carry in my wallet. I call it Sigfaterp, but it's really uh, C-I-G-F-T-R-P for pre-flighting an airplane. Before you run it up, you want to make sure everything's right, and uh, instead of just visually looking at it, you use that little mnemonic. You check the various things that are applied in uh, C-I-G-F-T-R-P. Controls, you check. Instruments, gas, flaps, trim, run-up, and the prop. And you're well covered. I did get a, a, a good lesson one time as a, as a pilot student. And uh, I was getting ready to check the uh, oil, climb up the ladder and look in the engine. And a young fellow came along that was working there. He would bring the planes in where to were to set them on the chocks and so on. And he said, I'll get it for you. So he went up and checked it. And as we sat in the uh, cabin inside the plane, my instructor said, did you check the oil? I said, well, yeah. I said, uh, a young fellow over there, he did it for me. What's his name? He said, I said, uh, I, I don't really know. So you trusted your life to uh, somebody that you don't know, never met before. And so I got the message and crawled out of the cabin and checked the oil myself. A good lesson, and I, I really appreciated it. Come to uh, some famous ones from jolly old England regarding the six wives of Henry VIII. And this, this details their fate. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. That tells exactly what happened to the, uh, the six wives. 
Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and uh, Catherine Parr. And to remember their names, Kate, Anne, Jane, Anne, two Kates again. There they are. Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and uh, Catherine Parr. And one of the simplest of all comes to mind, the sailor left port. I don't think people really need that. He, most people, even those who are not accustomed to uh, boats in the nautical world, still, still seem to know that port is left and starboard is right. But there it is, the sailor left port. A lot of ground, doesn't it? I, th I think my favorite is King Philip, come out for goodness sake. The taxonomic classification. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And uh, I'm also fond of, on old Olympus's towering tops, a Finn and German viewed some hops. Not much of a need for me to learn that, but there they are, the 12 cranial nerves. Well, this has been kind of interesting, I think. So we'll be uh, getting back together again some other time on some other subject. For now, this is Bill Owen bidding you goodbye and take good care of yourself.